Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Pseudocoders. Today we are going to talk about lead code problem number 20, that's valid parenthesis. Now this is a classic st uh, stat problem and if you have been uh, trying to solve lead code problems lately, you'll understand that you can solve the parenthesis problem using either backtracking or stacks. Let's, uh, so let's get into the problem. Let's read the problem. The problem states that given a string s containing just characters these determine if the input string is valid. So we want to check that uh, if the input string is valid. An input string is valid if the open brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets and open brackets must be closed in the correct order. So what do they mean? They mean that the opening brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets. So if there's an opening round bracket, it must be closed by the uh, closed by the closing round bracket and they must be in the correct order. So for example, if you have an opening bracket, opening round bracket, it should be closed by uh, the round bracket. So if you look at example number three here, we have an opening round bracket. It is closed, but it is closed by a square bracket. So our expression is not valid. So this is the way you would uh, ch check if the string is valid or not. But how, to, how do we do that in code? Uh, we can do that using stacks. Uh, now let me walk with you on how we can do it. So let me move back to our little sketchbook here. Now this is uh, examples that are there in lead code problem. So let's take into account the first one. Okay, the the steps that we are gonna use to check if uh, to ch uh, to check if the string is valid or not is this way. So we have a stack. We go through the string one by one. We check if it's an opening bracket. We add it to the stack and then move forward. If we encounter a closing bracket, we check the top of the stack and see if that closing bracket has an opening bracket inside the top of the stack. If it matches, then we pop out, pop it out into the stack. Whereas if we have suppose an opening uh, and uh, our closing round bracket, but the top of the stack has uh, opening square bracket, then we directly return false and uh, the program ends there. And once we, so suppose if everything goes right and we reach the end of the string, in the end, we check if the stack is empty. If the stack is empty, then we know that the string is valid. So we return true. Whereas if the stack is not empty, we return false. So I have gone through a number of steps here so let's uh, try and understand it with the help of the example. Okay, so let's take into account this first example here. Now let's uh, see we have a stack and the example is this. Okay, we come here, the first element of the string, it's an opening bracket. We add it to the stack. We move on to the next element. That's an opening round bracket. Since it's an opening bracket, we add it to the stack. Now, we encounter a closing bracket. Uh, now, what we do in terms of that, we just pop out, uh, we see the top element of the stack, right? So we see what is the top element of the stack. The top element of the stack right now is a opening round bracket. We see that the type of those two match, yes. Then we pop this out of the stack. Now we move forward. We move forward, we encounter that there is a square closing bracket. Now we again check the top of the stack. Now the top of the stack has an opening square bracket. Since they match, we pop it out of the stack. Now we have reached the end of the string. We check if our stack is empty. Yes, our stack is empty because these two elements were popped out. So we know that this string is valid. Now let's take into account the second example. The second example says that there's a closing bracket, opening, closing, opening. Okay. Now we have a stack in place. We go to the first element. It says that we have an opening curly braces. Since it's an opening bracket, we add it to the stack. Now we encounter that there's an opening square braces. Since it's an opening bracket, we add it to the stack. We come to the third character. It uh, says that there's a closing bracket in place. Okay, we have a closing packet. Now what we do is we uh, look at the top element of the stack. Now we check if the types match. 
This is a closing curly braces, whereas we have an opening square braces. That means that the type don't match and hence this is not a valid expression. So this is not a valid expression. So that's how you move. That's how you check if a string is valid or not with parentheses. Um, yeah, so let's try and write some code for this. Mm, let me move back to our code lit code code panel and let me zoom out a bit go to the right side oops <laughs> sorry about that and then okay okay so we start by initializing a stack so we stay stack is equal to empty array, empty list and then since we have opening and closing brackets, we want to uh, specify some kind of a relationship that will help us finding out if we encounter the closing bracket. Uh, by looking at the stack, we have to understand and find out that this closing bracket, suppose the co closing curly braces have the corresponding opening curly braces. So for that, I'll create a map. So we say bracket map would be, uh, would be having uh, suppose uh, so a clo cl uh, closing braces will have an opening braces and so on so we will have three relationships here since we have uh, three types of brackets in this scenario so I have this and then one more one more would be closing bracket and then the opening bracket okay so I have determined the relationship using dictionary. Uh, I'll also use a set to store all my opening brackets. So let's say opening brackets is equal to set of three tags, opening round bracket, opening square bracket, and opening curly braces. Okay. Now that I have that in place, I have to go through one each element one by one. So I'll say for x in s. First condition, we need to check if it's an opening bracket, right? So if x is in opening brackets, then what do we do? We just simply add it to the stack. So we say stack dot append x. What's the second condition? The second condition is to check if it's not an opening bracket, that means it's a closing bracket. And what do we do uh, when we look at the closing bracket? We look at the top of the stack and see if their type match. So we do LF. The, uh, so basically, once we, have, we, once we look at the top of the stack, we first have to make sure that the stack is not empty. Otherwise, that will, the program will throw an exception. So how do we check that? We check L if stack is not empty. So stack is, so we can check the length of the stack is greater than zero. Or in Python, you can just check if stack, that will check if the stack is not empty. And you look at the stack's top element is equal to equal to opening bracket of that particular closing bracket. So we do already have the relationship. So it says bracket map of X. So suppose you have closing curly braces. If you have closing curly braces, it will give you the opening curly braces. So that's how dictionary actually works. So if that's the case and they match, then you do you do stack dot pop. Okay, so that will pop out the element from your stack. Whereas else, if none of these conditions satisfied, then you just return false. That means that the string is not valid. Once this for loop executes in the end, we want to check that if the stack is empty. So we check if stack, so we do uh, if stack, I mean the stack is still not empty, then we return false. Oops. Otherwise, we just return true. So if there's anything in the stack, you return false, otherwise you return true. Okay, now let's try and submit this.
Oh yeah, first uh, we need to talk about space and time complexity. Uh, since we are going through each and every element in this string, it's going to be O of n. Whereas this in operation inside the opening bracket set takes time, it has the constant uh, time complexity. So it's O of 1. Whereas also when you do a dictionary of some element, that is also O of 1. So that's O of n into O of 1 into O of 1. That brings out to be O of n. So our time complexity here will be O of n. Now let's talk about the space complexity. The space complexity would be the stack. Stack actually will hold at the most n by two elements. So suppose, let's take an example. Suppose we have a big string where there's five opening uh, round brackets and then five closing round brackets, all of them nested together. So at some certain point of time, our stack will have n by two elements in the stack. So that's n by two. Whereas this bracket map and opening brackets are actually constant since there are just three elements in it. So it's O of 1. Then it will be n by 2 plus 1. And the space complexity would be n by 2. Uh, if you have been reading about complexities, you will know that we drop, while well, calculating complexities, we drop constants. So the time complexity comes out to be O of n from n by 2. Right? Now let's try and submit this program and see if it gets accepted <laughs> okay yeah it did it was a success it's faster than 69 percent of the use python users and the memory is 14.3 mb uh, so that's how you solve the valid parenthesis problem uh, thank you so much for watching if you would like to see some videos related to lead code you can give my uh, Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Happy coding.